kind of uh, able to uh, invent or design things for these uh, negligible parts of the world, which nevertheless we consider the most important places of the world. And this is uh, any place in the world where the condition of metropolis, which uh, is the uh, historical density of people on uh, restricted territories, exists, exists. Uh, as will be clear, but not very uh, explicitly, and that, that is why I would like to make it uh, more or less explicit uh, now at the beginning. Uh, this work is a polemic uh, on many fronts at the same time. And, uh, for instance, uh, there, there's a different, if we are in America and show our work in America, there is a different polemic uh, versus the Americans than when we show our work in Europe uh, versus uh, the Europeans. But what will be clear is that uh, our work should be seen really uh, in a kind of opposition, which maybe now I should make explicit, against the type of work which, for instance, uh, Leo Creer, to, to name the best uh, representative, of this kind of movement is making, and which uh, we, and I should also say that uh, I use we and I indiscriminately, and that sometimes when I say I, I mean we, and sometimes when I say we, I mean I. <laughs> uh, but, but that, uh, nevertheless, <laughs> uh, that nevertheless, uh, our work is really a polemic against uh, what we see as a kind of uh, to use the word, yes, phony and uh, f fabricated uh, attempt to resuscitate some uh, kind of uh, architectural past and concept of a public 19th century or eight, maybe even 18th or 17th century concept of a public realm, uh, which uh, we think is, or I think, is completely irretrievable, and, and which anyway I, I have in the present circumstances maybe not even that much sympathy for. And um, so that is one thing, kind of, we, we consider whether it's coming from, uh, let's say, Aldo van Eyck or, or the Queers or uh, uh, Aldo Rossi, we consider this uh, fabrication of a public realm uh, in the total absence of any uh, events or any culture that could possibly fill it as a, a, a relatively negative um, type of work. And, and therefore we tried by extrapolating certain examples uh, su such as they have occurred uh, in this century, to uh, to design alternatives for that condition, so, and 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 you will see those alternatives. We are also, and that is definitely a lesson, uh, which uh, and and I would like also to to dissociate myself to a certain extent from uh, New York in the sense that I, I, it's obviously a kind of case of death if uh, we are forever. Uh, associated with, with New York, and if our work is considered as a New York uh, architecture. But anyway, we have uh, extrapolated from New York a certain uh, major and, and relatively primitive conclusion, which is that one should never design overall all plans, but that the best uh, and the only thing one can do is to establish localized uh, and very localized points of um, of very intense and explicit architecture. Then uh, the third thing in, in which we are uh, relatively polemical, mostly by default, is that in spite of everything, we still have a sympathy for technological apparatus and for the so-called modern age, or maybe even a machine age, uh, especially as it supports human Im imagination and helps to establish the reality of our minds versus the, uh, the so-called real reality. And I want to... Oh, God, I have no... I want to really rush... Uh, is this the only one we have? Ne neither of these... Uh, it, it moves backward nor forward. <coughs> what does it mean? Uh, it, it, it needs more willpower than I... <laughs> uh, to, to establish, in a way, our, our, ex our, our examples or our precedents or the things we would like to... the tradition, which, which really isn't a tradition, but... 
um, a relatively accidental series of examples in which we uh, would like to place our work. Uh, I'm rushing through a series of examples, especially th uh, this one, and, and don't expect a very uh, coherent argument for them uh, or about them. Um, this is a skyscraper in New York which was designed in 1903 and which had especially interesting this insert, which we will see a close up of, which establishes in 1903 that uh, in a perfectly conventional uh, uh, room in one of these uh, buildings, a room even with uh, wood, wood paneling, uh, velvet, uh, velvet uh, walls and an uh, old-fashioned traditional fireplace, there was a series hidden a series of seven outlets, and these outlets were both salt, salt air, fresh air, dry salt air, dry fresh air, perfumes, medicated air to suit disease, and temperature switch. And uh, this fact alone kind of me meant that by uh, 1903, the tradition and the apparatus was ready to, in a sense, make uh, every single room or every single architectural space into uh, a in a certain way uh, a vehicle for mental journeys which could range from the very hedonistic uh, through perfumes through the uh, medical or scientific uh, through the medicated airs through the little or uh, or figurative in the sense that uh, a skyscraper like, or a room like this was especially designed uh, for people so that they could stay wherever they were forever and still have a sensation of moving uh, all over the world and that they would stay in New York, for instance, in the summer and, and switch the temperature on Canada and stay there in the winter and switch the temperature of Florida. Uh, this is the second building, the Downtown Athletic Club, which is in New York a series of, uh, on, on an identical, which is a, a small site in the south of, uh, southern end of New York, which uh, is repeated uh, for a certain number of times. It's completely repeated 15 times, and every time there's connected by a series of elevator a completely different uh, physical activity. And that is for both Ile and myself a paradigm of, uh, of our work. And I would like to see, uh, show two of these examples. One of them, one of these floors, is an interior golf court. Can, can this be focused? Yeah, the middle part is totally part. Very totally. The, one of them is an interior golf course, which uh, is uh, which really establishes one of the uh, basic ideas of uh, metropolitan uh, life, which is that it is possible f to have all things at all times. So that uh, this building doesn't, uh, as one of the uh, offerings it provides and one of the facilities it provides, is its own the site it itself occupies. Uh, reconstituted uh, as kind of virgin nature on the 12th floor. So it, in a sense, uh, uh, apart from all the activities it provides, it doesn't really consume the earth, but uh, establishes it only, replaces it or uh, displaces it to the 13th floor as only one of many offerings. <coughs> and another uh, obsession which has to uh, do with certain events uh, in my past, is that architecture could be seen as a form of writing, and as a form of, of screenwriting. And, or, or, or that architecture is a kind of orchestration of uh, uh, particular forms of life, and that through the, uh, through the twin presences of, of density and the technology, and, and therefore the uh, obliteration of conventional reality as we know it and its replacement by mental realities that uh, therefore it, it puts uh, to the architecture it gives the architect the freedom really to uh, to consider architecture as, as a form of writing with inanimate objects and uh, this um, floor is in that sense th this floor in this downtown athletic club is maybe the most perfect example of that it is, a, as you can see, a rectangle, a rectangle subdivided in, in, perf in a perfectly banal way, which is nevertheless uh, in, in incredibly exciting. Uh, there is this battery of nine elevators, which uh, goes either up or down, obviously, to other destinies and uh, also to the uh, original plane of the Earth. But one has to imagine that here there is a kind of well-dressed Wall Street banker or gentleman kind of comes out of the elevator, uh, traverses this wall and then uh, arrives in a locker room. The locker room is uh, one of the s uh, s 
kind of concept which is central to, to the American uh, sensibility. Uh, and it is a space where uh, men especially uh, walk around naked uh, while they behave that they are not naked. And uh, in this uh, space, which is, uh, as you can see, kind of isolated in the center of the floor, and therefore uh, which is a kind of safe, so to speak, from daylight, and, and from the uh, kind of rationalistic implications of daylight, the, the gentle the banker undresses, is naked, and then he can go to another wall either for boxing, so he puts on his boxing gloves, or for wrestling. But then, and the most amazing kind of invention in terms of scenario is this thing, the oyster bar, which is uh, at the, uh, kind of established at the same floor. So for uh, me and for us, maybe the 20th century is that century where it is possible on the ninth floor of a given place on the earth to uh, eat oysters with boxing gloves naked. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and not only that, but I, I would like to be more aggressive, that anybody who doesn't like that is really a fool. <laughs> and, 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 and that and anybody who is not excited by this concept of modernity, which has really existed in the 20s to 30s and maybe even through the 40s, is uh, whatever his political conviction, a totally reactionary person. Um, uh, I would uh, so this is um, a further example of, of the concept of metropolis really as a, as a situation which uh, offers everything to all people at the same time. Uh, we know that um, that uh, modern architecture has waged a battle for one particular urban model, which is the model of towers in a park. Uh, the the establishment of, of more or less transparent, crystal, invisible uh, uh, objects in, uh, in oxygen-producing agents. Um, and uh, we, we can see that, uh, that this idea has also existed uh, in the metropolis, that, that it exists in a city like New York, but only as one of many layers of one particular building, as in this case Rockefeller Center. But this is a plan of the 10th floor, of the 10th floor level, where all the roofs of the uh, relatively low buildings, which are still 10th floor, are covered with a single park, and that from this park rise uh, certain high-rise elements like towers. So here we see the, what for me is the metropolis, a kind of solid block of 10 floors in which more or less unspeakable activities uh, take place. Then, uh, on superimposed on, this, uh, on these activities, there is suddenly this uh, model the Europeans fought for frantically, but where the Europeans uh, fought for it at the exclusion of everything else, in the real metropolis and in the real concept of metropolis, it was just one offering among many, as, as is illustrated in this uh, drawing, at the Corbusier on the 20th floor, on the 10th floor, and in this plane. And, and then kind of certain uh, areas of this park are, are not merely given, uh, given over to grass, but are actually conquered for ideological moments, such as this uh, Italian garden, which was a gift of Benito Mussolini and which uh, still exists. Um, there are, there are met metropolitan life is really an accelerator of manners and uh, uh, kind of... Uh, <laughs> A situation where uh, a convention can only exist for a split second to be uh, replaced by... Uh, uh, and, and it uh, obviously uh, is, is a situation which uh, takes its toll and which is not uh, purely positive and, and, uh, and purely benevolent and which always ranges, uh, ranges uh, such as in this case, between the sublime and the horrifying. But that is something which has to be accepted. Um, then, uh, finally, ju just as one more image of what metropolitan life is about, I showed you the, this one building which was able, through the, uh, uh, ap through the application of technology, to uh, offer its own uh, site, its own occupation on the 13th floor. 
Uh, this uh, doctrine, which was never made explicit, uh, went even further in a city which shall remain nameless, such as in this case, where in an extremely uh, uh, in an extremely sophisticated ballroom, a person held a barnyard party, uh, turning the whole ballroom into a barnyard in, in, in within the space of 24 hours, and converting the concept of a cow in this object, which is called uh, Molly, the Moe cow, and which had uh, coming from two of its nipples champagne, and from uh, its third nipple uh, whiskey, and its uh, thir a fourth uh, soda water. Well, finally, uh, we, uh, uh, we and, and maybe in this case I should say, to, not to burden uh, Ilya with an kind of unbearable load, I should say uh, myself, um, think that in certain extreme cases there should, there, it is possible to argue that, uh, uh, n that architecture shouldn't adapt to people, but that people should adapt to architecture. Such as in this case. <laughs> uh, I, I want to show. Uh, I want to rush uh, through our uh, past, and um, but but show nevertheless that we had certain consens consistent uh, preoccupations, and that as I said, if one uh, places this work uh, uh, in opposition to the the work which is present done on the kind of restoration of urban texture and the resuscitation of of uh, more or less, or supposedly uh, natural urban networks, urban fabrics, or, or authentic urban fabrics, in spite of, of the modern age, that uh, we had at the, uh, from the beginning an, an uh, awareness that it, it would be bad to try to uh, cover uh, areas which were well, which had a large diameter. I mean, it's as simple as that. Which had a large diameter with an, a single ideology, and one of our first models was the Berlin Wall, which ran as an extremely negative scar uh, through the city of Berlin, but which, nevertheless, to anybody who uh, saw it, had a very strong and potent uh, aesthetic. Was a very strong and potent aesthetic sensation, and our first project was uh, a uh, subversion or a conversion or interpretation of the Berlin Wall, this time a zone uh, running through uh, the city of London, which uh, was subdivided in a series of squares. Each square was a, an institution and a building and, and a, a, a particular uh, discrete uh, scenario. And our object with the, this situation was to establish on a, in a line, which by definition has a negligible surface, uh, a, a series of events which uh, would always, because of its linearity, have a particular and opposite relationship with the existing context. So the sympathy with the context would not be expressed so much by some form of simulation an imitation or mimicking of that context, but on the contrary, by putting a line in a very uh, almost modest uh, occupation of the ground, which would then at each uh, point provide the maximum possible contrast with the context, but not destroy that context uh, by that presence, but put it in some kind of uh, relief. And also, of course, the polemic was uh, with the city of London, which we thought was a series of uh, uh, an accumulation of privatenesses, and uh, which was lacking utterly in some kind of public, um, ex some kind of public experience. So therefore, so therefore, each of the squares was um, devoted to uh, a public experience, such as this case. The, an, an interpretation of the Roman bath, where people were invited to uh, to indulge in certain hedonistic fantasies in private cells, to therefore uh, develop certain muta mutant uh, forms of behavior and mutant social proposals, and then filter, uh, when they felt uh, sufficiently confident of the validity of these proposals, filter in some kind of public arena where they would uh, perform these proposals for their fellow men, and thus inspire them. Uh, and, and as a kind of contrast uh, to this uh, very uh, demanding uh, kind of collective life, 
and, and, and this is also something where, where I think that, uh, if, if I may uh, add a kind of relatively uh, narcissistic aside, where we are different from, uh, from, the, uh, from the other uh, resuscitators of the public realm, in the sense that we, when we make a proposal, we are specific as to what the contents or the culture or the performance of such a proposal is, rather than leave an empty space with uh, an inordinate amount of optimism about the uh, use of, the, of such an empty space. Then uh, we moved our attention uh, to New York uh, for reasons uh, which are not entirely clear, but uh, but which had certainly to do with the fact that um, we had an intuition that uh, New York, and well, and, and maybe it, uh, it is clear that uh, New York, uh, from the age that uh, I personally was a, a child, and I had an aunt who was a stewardess, who would always come back from New York. That from from that age, uh, it, I always considered it the, in the world absolutely the most exciting uh, place, the most exciting visual experience, the most exciting everything. And that at the same the same time, in one could uh, lead an architectural life in this century, especially in the second half of this century, without ever mentioning, thinking considering uh, New York, which, which at the se in spite of the fact that it on this primitive, childish level, it was such an exciting situation. So, but uh, basically the motivation behind this move to New York was, was obviously to, to investigate and uh, in a sense harvest um, the causes of this childish uh, enthusiasm and to investigate whether they didn't have a larger an ultimate architectural and more sophisticated architectural relevance. Um, well, this uh, is a series. Uh, I should also say that the office obviously doesn't only exist of Ilya uh, uh, and myself, but also of Sorens and Gillis and Madeleine Friesendorp, and that they uh, they contribute uh, for an extremely important uh, part to our work. And that, uh, especially that Madeleine Friesendorp, in this case, in this series of paintings, uh, investigated an alternative way of interpreting architecture and decoding or deciphering certain uh, aspects of architecture. Uh, and I can only, oh God, my, my willpower is. <laughs> uh, that in this uh, series of um, paintings. Which had a very, which were inspired to a very large degree with a kind of folk art or popular, uh, popular media, uh, which in New York, which exists in New York to um, to digest what what New York means. And I, I will show later a, a little sequence which which uh, exposes our sources of inspiration and which also shows that it's not necessarily an esoteric uh, operation, but that the only thing we're doing is is taking off the cream, which is kind of uh, floating on top of, of a situation as New York. Oh, I'm sorry, this is in mirror image. This is the arm of the Statue of Liberty uh, ripped off and, and uh, acting as a uh, night, night lamp. This is the Zeppelin acting as a prophylactic. <laughs> <laughs> this is the grid acting as a carpet. And this is a series of paintings, as you found them, which are the, uh, the secret of this painting, uh, which is uh, on the wall here. Because somehow America was tell telling us, uh, giving us a message, which we, with so much insistence that we couldn't ignore it. First, uh, we found this postcard. Uh, of a, a beach near Miami, uh, which um, had two competing, so uh, three competing sources of light: the uh, natural light of the moon, which itself, of course, is a reflected uh, light source. Then there's the reflection of the reflection, and then there's the simulation of the sun, which which is a lighthouse. Then we found a second postcard in which the collective unconscious of America had inserted a fourth source of light which was uh, a, a car which was kind of 
uh, with full headlights, headlights full ahead, so that if, if the painting is now divided in four parts, each quarter contains its own light source, while the position of the moon has been made more precarious by, by the clouds. Then, uh, I found, uh, I found uh, kind of three months later, somewhere in Delaware, a painting which was made after the postcard. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and which I still, uh, which I still have, and, and which bears the extremely sad date uh, on which it is made, of the 26th of December 1952. <laughs> For some reason I think it's, so that is really why, why that painting is there. And, uh, and then there is a further uh, investigation of the Freudian thematics of postcards, such as the tunnel, the gap, let's say, the grotto, and, and that same painting, but now seen from a position uh, on top of the lighthouse, kind of looking at the car uh, in the distance. Um, the, uh, m the main conclusion, and in, in, in a way the kind of the uh, image which is comparable to the plan of the uh, c Exodus uh, competition of, of the series of scenarios running like a scar through London is this uh, city for the captive globe, which is which tries to uh, compact all the conclusions of, of New York and to present them in an extremely uh, simple and uh, primitive form, and in a relatively for, vulgar form, which is the city of the Catholic globe, which only uh, concludes from the whole experience of New York the following things, that uh, the secret of New York is that each building, uh, through the uh, fantastic um, incremental receptivity of the New York grid uh, starts with an identical site so that there is no implicate, never an implication of hierarchy in terms of largeness of the site, the location of the site, the uh, an hier hierarchy of perspective, of panorama, of uh, kind of axis, that every site is uh, rigorously identical and therefore uh, there is a kind of equality of the point of departure. But that, once that uh, discipline is accepted, uh, there is a bonus of uh, the freedom to manifest one's uh, private uh, concerns and one's private ideology with uh, maximum uh, frenetic uh, explicitness and, and uh, almost hysteria, and to grow from this identical side uh, more or less indefinitely uh, toward uh, heaven. And Myself, I consider that this is maybe in the 20th century the only viable form of a public realm, that the, the city is uh, a collection or and an accumulation of uh, pseudo or crypto public realms, which in fact are uh, gigantic, enormous <coughs> inflations of private realms, and that the private realms kind of grows and inflates and kind of manifests itself to such a point that it uh, collects for itself, or seduces for itself, or conquers for itself an audience, or um, uh, a population, so to speak, but uh, that there can never be a homogeneous ideology over uh, uh, one particular given territory. And that this is uh, the, the, the single most uh, essential conclusion which should be uh, opposed to the uh, present uh, European way of thinking, where always one uh, ideology is uh, extended uh, like a blanket over uh, a colossal uh, territories. Well, in New York, there's a fantastic discretion and modesty in terms of occupation of of two-dimensional space, which is the secret and the condition and the uh, point of departure for an equally uh, tremendous uh, megalomania in the third dimension, and that, uh, and that that uh, model of the city as a quilt or carpet of different uh, ideologies is, is maybe at this time the only uh, viable one. So, so now Ilya will talk about the... Uh, well, before I go any further, um, 
I would like to, uh, while, we, while I keep this picture on the, on the screen, um, I, in a sense I'm, I'm provoking to, after Rem's introduction, to making myself a small mini manifesto. I, I have to tell you that um, the way we planned this lecture was um, that uh, we've agreed on, on the telephone to, we planned it on the telephone. I mean, not that this is a kind of an expedient in any way, but we have found the telephone as a very inspiring uh, communication means. I mean, we have our fights on the telephone and we, may, we have most of our agreements on the telephone and we even find it very inspiring for even designing buildings. So we, 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 we agreed that, uh, that we would divide the, le the lecture into convenient sectors and uh, for me the most convenient was the fact that we agreed Rem would do the introduction and the conclusion. But that, uh, apart from that, we would kind of follow up uh, after one sector after the other. And, uh, and so, not knowing exactly what the other is, is going to say, one finds oneself uh, uh, provoked into following on from, from, uh, from what the other might have said at the beginning. So I would like to speed up and reinforce uh, uh, the, the two things about, about what Rem said at the introduction, which are to do with, uh, with the we and the I, uh, uh, and which has to do with the fact that uh, uh, the I is more often the we than, than the, uh, the other way around. Uh, and I would like to very strongly uh, reinforce two points. One, which uh, because we often are uh, misunderstood in that respect. One, which has to do with, uh, with the fact that we, and I agree with them that we, we, we do not... Uh, 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 believe in, in the resuscitation of, uh, of a public realm that, 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 uh, ha that belongs somewhere uh, in history um, and which is a kind of sentimental reconstruction of, of, of a point before things started going wrong and the things started going wrong with the advent of technology and that is the second point that, that uh, technology has been uh, has been given values such as uh, good, bad, or neutral, and the uh, present uh, the present uh, Marxist view is that it is bad, and we both of us strongly uh, reject and and ignore that kind of value uh, uh, given to technology. In that we believe that we we live in a part of history which is irreversible, irrevocable, and if technology has landed us with uh, pollution, our problem is not so much how to counteract pollution, because that is, is very easy to do, but how, to, how we can learn to live with that baby that we have inherited from the 19th century. And very much of our work is, 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 is based on this belief. How does this move? <laughs> you, you, you push it and then you believe it. <laughs> <laughs> My face is... <laughs> yeah. I, yes. Here, good. I touched it. So, um, um, I'm going to, um, to uh, first uh, talk about a project that I did uh, shortly after uh, the project that we jointly did in 72, which was uh, the uh, project for London, um, and which was inspired from the uh, kind of theoretical, um, from the theoretical uh, lesson that uh, Rem's previous picture, the, the square of the captive globe, uh, the, the, the lessons that it was trying to do, which, which the lessons that it was trying to, to uh, put forward, which were more or less an extrapolation of, uh, of uh, what in fact is happening in New York itself. Uh, all sides are equal. They are equal because of the uh, infinite uh, and relentless uh, repetition of the grid. And on these sides you have very different and very uh, heterogeneous proposals which nevertheless make up a, an extremely powerful and, and homogeneous uh, and uh, uh, ordered uh, city. Um, so that in a sense, uh, this extrapolation and, and this project uh, of the square of the captive globe uh, uh, led me to attempt the next uh, project that I, that I did uh, in 1973, 
uh, which meant that uh, uh, all one had basically in and in outline was uh, the uh, repetition of the grid, the repetition of equal base, the base, uh, uh, the base being primarily uh, dedicated to activities which were social, communal, collective, and which belonged to the street life, and on top of that, uh, activities which uh, were, uh, I, uh, which which were uh, itemized and and, uh, and separated and 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 different in each case. Um, and also the other thing that uh, we found that uh, whereas in the London project everything we did which was based on the idea of, uh, of, uh, a, of taking a strip, a, a continuous straight line, uh, and then dividing it into equal parts, and then within each part uh, uh, finding, uh, 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 creating a program, an institution for collective activities, that uh, whereas in London uh, these, things came, um, this, 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 these things came into clash with, uh, with the fabric of London itself, and which gave rise to the idea of kind of architectural warfare uh, with the, the existing uh, fabric of the city, we found that these things uh, naturally fitted the New York grid without any effort whatsoever. Even in the case of a, of a project as stupid as this one, because it really is stupid, uh, because it proposed a cross-town park across uh, New York, which meant uh, the demolition of quite a lot of extremely beautiful uh, buildings but which nevertheless was an application also of, uh, of the earlier projects of ours uh, of, of creating a park that would go underneath uh, the avenues which would be continuous and on which one would have experimental and temporary structures. Uh, the avenues would go through, uh, would be glazed and there would be a, an overhead uh, transport system linking the East River with, uh, with Hudson, but nevertheless without any effort this thing fitted into New York. Um, and uh, the project that, uh, that I did at the time was uh, on the sites um, which are to the left of the United Building. Basically, for those who don't know, uh, New York between 42nd and 34th Street in New York, uh, the avenues are wide and occur at, uh, at, uh, at uh, intervals of uh, 200 meters. And the streets occur at intervals of 60 meters and are narrow, except for approximately every eight streets, where you get a street which is as wide as an avenue, and there are major streets, and so it's 42nd Street, and so it's 34th Street. In a sense, 42nd Street is bounded, one can say, the, the, the building, the, the predominant building on it is the Chrysler Building, and 34th Street, the predominant building over it is the Empire State <coughs> Building, which is, which is seen over there. Now, the sites available were these sites on the waterfront, which, uh, which uh, were uh, offered, they belong to the Connecticut Electric Company, which in a sense offers electricity to New York, and uh, they were going to move out at the time uh, across the river and only leave a very small part of their, of their facilities there, and they were offering proposals to uh, uh, generally uh, to, be, to be made to New York City. At the time they were genuine, but then later on the proposals were ignored, but nevertheless we thought uh, it was uh, a, a, an interesting site to, uh, to study, and um, it, it happened to be next door to one of these alien bodies in New York, which is the United Nations building, and also uh, 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 just for, for uh, ident identification purposes, this uh, small, strange, uh, well it's not that small in fact, uh, octagonal building is a building which is immediately above the Queens Midtown Tunnel that, that links Manhattan Island with Queens and, and, and further to the airport etc. which is a tunnel that goes underneath the, the East River and this building is also a ventilator building. But I'm, 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 suggest I'm, I'm mentioning this for reference purposes because it becomes later part of, of the project that, that I did, which, uh, uh, of which is an elevation here, which uh, 34th Street would be here, and, uh, and uh, 42nd. Huh? 42nd Street is here, and this is the, uh, this is the uh, ventilation, uh, the ventilation building over the, over the side, which was appropriated for this development. And the, 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 the main uh, uh, concern at the time was really 
to, to develop a housing project, but a housing project that, that uh, would, in a sense, comply with certain ideas that we were having at the time about lifestyle and about, about apartments, which would also be uh, an, a, an application of the principles that were laid down in the uh, in, in Rems project of the Square of the Captive Globe with the with the equal basis and then different uh, projects uh, uh, different uh, projects uh, arising on each one of these bases. This I have I must say that this was a project that we did earlier on uh, in, uh, in in the in seventy three. Uh, which uh, uh, at the moment uh, I wouldn't do uh, in the same way, simply for the fact that uh, I wouldn't any longer like to be the architect uh, of more than one of those sites. And that in a sense, it, it seems to, it, it, for me now, it has the same kind of uh, uh, problems that, uh, that we uh, have been criticizing in the modern movement which was an attempt at totalizing solutions which could be similar. Although we attempted, I attempted to provide variants within each of the blocks, it still would, I still would have preferred to, to have been dealing with only one of the sites and the other sites to be uh, given over to different architects, provided that the principles of, of, uh, of uh, Manhattanism would have been adopted. Uh, so this project uh, was... Uh, Basically, um, for the first four sites were given over to the uh, uh, housing project. Uh, the, there were, again, you will recognize four bases which are the same. The bases were not planned at the time. Later on, uh, I went into planning the interiors of the bases. But they were uh, uh, to be devoted to collective facilities uh, and above would rise the uh, apartments, the uh, uh, housing, uh, which were then also orientated towards the view, towards the river. There were three uh, connections with, uh, with uh, sort of public activity. One was on the street level, which was the uh, activity uh, that, that, that goes round in the streets in, in New York, shopping and, uh, and other activities related to the street life. Another one would occur at a, some kind of uh, piano nobile on top of the bases, which were linked, these piano nobile were linked by a continuous bridge, uh, and uh, on which uh, collective facilities related, relating to each one of the blocks would take place. And finally, at the points or at the extremities of uh, each of these uh, blocks, like for instance, these points where there is a junction or up high there, there would be uh, collective uh, uh, facilities at local, localized collective facilities such as, for instance, overlooking over the streets um, with, at, at this height, some, it's somewhere on the 20th floor, uh, bridging over the street, one would have uh, collective lounges, restaurants, bars, etc. Uh, or further down, one would have uh, clubs, uh, food stores, or other com communal facilities. And these were to the piano nobile parts were to uh, contain uh, outdoor facilities and also uh, be, in terms of typology, um, the equivalent of something like a Parisian courtyard or the, in the, the interior of a Parisian uh, uh, housing block. Uh, the um, elevators were located at the ends between, uh, between uh, at the junction between uh, the streets and First Avenue, which run along this side. They occurred there, 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 and also at mid-block, just to the right. I have a plan, uh, I think I have a plan later on where I'll show where these are located, so that you had vertical, uh, vertical uh, circulation facilities and certain levels which at certain intervals became uh, collective uh, and communal levels. Um, so, yes, um, and also uh, there were, I mean, I'm beginning to suggest to show this because it later on becomes uh, relevant, uh, connections between permanent, uh, the permanent parts of the city, the permanent parts uh, of the buildings on the city and, and uh, tentative attachments to floats. 
uh, which uh, floats, which we later are going to refer to as ideological floats. In this case, it's a floating uh, arena, uh, which is connected to one of these, uh, but which become, uh, because of the fact that in some cases, uh, we, th there was a kind of ambiguity between, between the extent to which one was uh, r realistic in terms of proposing things that could really be built uh, in, in New York and also uh, utopian in terms of the programmatic aspect of this uh, that, uh, that whenever we found a programmatic poverty in the program we suggested that later on floating through the river uh, ideological enrichments for collective facilities would come and become attached to these, uh, to these permanent structures so that you would have the connections uh, which, which would be perhaps movable, which would consist of elevators and staircases linking up things that would float and, and, and that would be movable and attach themselves to the uh, uh, riverfront. <coughs> And uh, then later on, going into uh, the uh, more uh, careful uh, scrutiny of what could be happening into a block like this, as I said earlier on, the base would be, uh, uh, would be conceived as a place for collective facilities uh, and then the apartments and then the, to achieve the, the concept of, uh, of density and in fact congestion we were beginning to, uh, to develop the idea where one would have a minimum uh, private accommodation with a maximum collective uh, facilities. And these collective facilities would, would take place in the lower part of the base uh, and, uh, would, uh, would, uh, and would even go down into the basement so that they would be available for the residents above but also for, for the city dweller along the, along the pavements. Um, for instance, um, physical activities in the basement, swimming pool, uh, uh, amphitheater. Uh, around the swimming pool, uh, there would be uh, dressing rooms, locker rooms. Even there would be a, um, a, a platform just below the street that would go around the whole block, which would contain additional facilities, in that case, uh, a golf course, uh, which is underground. Uh, a, also, at, the, at that end, there would have been a library. The library would have been would would be connected by a continuous corridor which is just below this corridor where reading booths could go all the way around and the library would collect in there a running track that would go through the physical uh, uh, through the physical exercise area through the swimming pool and again and also in a tube run through the library and then <laughs> uh, and then various well I'll, I'll go into Oh yes, well things like um, bridging between two of the streets, perhaps a, a restaurant. I mean these things were, were all these uh, collective facilities were suggestions that were in a sense interchangeable and movable. So at, uh, in elevation, uh, this would be an elevation of a street. Uh, this would be the podium seen from the river. These windows are the windows of, uh, of the uh, FDR that runs along the podium. This is the floating, this is the elevation of the floating uh, uh, amphitheater, the, the escalator, the level of the podium, and then the definition of the street itself with the uh, high, high level restaurant that would, that would be, or bar or collective living room that would be uh, would be placed in a position that would enjoy the kind of canyon-like effect of the street. And, and interspersed at regular intervals would be the collective facilities such as uh, perhaps a food store or a, or a club or, or some other small-scale localized collective facility. Such as here, for instance. Then the roofs uh, would, be, uh, would be related to collective uh, levels, again related to the lift lobbies, 
and would be devoted to and would be open and uh, and would become open gardens no matter on what level uh, or, and gardens of different of different uh, styles like for instance one would have a kind of tropical arrangement and, and again the uh, the uh, although it may appear a, a, a little bit uh, utopian here there is a, a, a metaphor uh, with regards to the role that technology might be able to play in creating synthetic uh, synthetic controlled environments no matter what level so that one would have a tropical uh, um, garden on a given level one would have a, a classical garden and one would also have an English garden um, and so on this I can neither focus nor change Nothing doing. Well, this is supposed to be. Uh, I have um, an exploded view of uh, the lift course. If I can focus it. I can't change it either. Can we change it now? Really hard. <laughs> 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 yeah, so uh, that, for instance, the, uh, an, uh, an explanation of, of the lift curve. <coughs> and uh, now going to the, the concept of, uh, of um, planning of the apartments. This, by that time, had become, to me, a question <coughs> of uh, of, uh, of getting away from the idea of, uh, of planning apartments according to conventional, uh, uh, to conventional uh, analysis of brief or of program, uh, in that, for instance, uh, I realize that depending on, on taste, I mean, that we have, in a sense, taste uh, has, has kind of indoctrinated our ways of, uh, of deciding the way spaces relate to ancillary spaces and so on that uh, for instance there is no need why uh, uh, the way uh, a family works uh, should dictate the way uh, spaces such as living rooms dining rooms kitchens etc should necessarily relate to each other in absolute terms and that in the end what one was dealing with if one was dealing with uh, with the planning of uh, uh, flats and of apartments was uh, a gradation of spaces that were to range from from the most public and, uh, and and social to the most private and that this gradation corresponded to a certain degree with volume and size so that one had to deal with nothing else except that big rooms and small rooms and that there was no other uh, secret or magic about planning an apartment uh, other than than putting together big rooms and small rooms uh, and that the rest would depend on, on, on lifestyle, so that, for instance, you could have as your living room the bathroom, uh, and, uh, this, and, uh, and, uh, on, whereas on the other case, you could have a library as your main living room, uh, with the bathroom becoming one of the ancillary spaces, but there was no particular rule, except, except that rule, for instance, uh, as, uh, that I'm putting, that I was proposing up here, that, for instance, off a lobby, all the basic principle for planning an apartment was that perhaps you have a, a number of large rooms and a number of small rooms, and that this basically made up the principles for planning uh, a flat or an apartment. So that uh, I mean, this is an out the, this uh, outline sketch proposal that if you had the lift course there and there, that uh, by means of um, which relates to the axonometric earlier on of of uh, of thrusts this way and that way of corridors or that way I mean this, this is taken on many levels with the, with the lift being there and there one would have one would arrive at what would basically make the 
the core of the of an apartment, which would be the biggest uh, social room, which in many cases would be Dublin space or, or treble in space, depending on the number of people, so that you would range from the idea of uh, of a bachelor to the idea of a of a traditional uh, uh, family to the idea of a commune. Uh, and that this large room would, would enlarge accordingly, become bigger, and the number of, of smaller rooms surrounding it would, would increase or decrease accordingly. So that, uh, uh, well, I showed that example <coughs> earlier on. So you would get from the most uh, simple and straightforward of two rooms, and, uh, of, of large rooms and small rooms, uh, uh, and in, in that project in particular, the large communal rooms became expressed on the wall of the housing by means of these large holes which were punched through the solid masonry or things which, be, which became the communal uh, rooms of the housing around which uh, both horizontally and vertically the, uh, private, uh, 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 the private rooms would, uh, would uh, be grouped such as in this case uh, where around this double volume space one would have uh, four rooms on two floors making eight rooms around one uh, central room and that as I said earlier room uh, earlier on this room could be would be the social center of the group of people occupying it and it and it could in fact be the bathroom as as the uh, central space <coughs> Or you could have a, a most uh, traditional, uh, conventional, almost Palladian arrangement uh, of, uh, of uh, Arabic. I mean, this, but these are different. Uh, I had another slide, but I couldn't find it. Of these being uh, standard mesonet types of going, of entering at the lobby, of going up, up and, and above. But this one is another one where you come in, you have uh, you have a uh, uh, portico and uh, and uh, symmetrical lobby, two symmetrical rooms. Going down to a symmetrical uh, living room space, your balcony is out into the street and then back again into your private rooms. In fact, you had, the, you had the option of an infinite arrangement and that after a certain point of having explored certain types, you needn't bother anymore about the planning of the units. Uh, well, very quickly uh, to, uh, to, to recap, uh, to go back to what uh, uh, Rem was saying earlier on, uh, at the time when we did uh, the uh, London project, we had investigated and we had proposed a series of collective institutions, we called them institutes at the time, which were dealing with the, the collective way of life which we thought necessary for a culture of con uh, the culture of, of uh, uh, congestion that we consider metropolitan life should have. And, uh, and these were formulated uh, in terms of, a, of certain, of certain uh, institutions in the London project between the two walls which as Rem said were inspired by by the Berlin Wall. In this case uh, the um, the uh, institution was called was called the reception uh, space and it was a center in which people escaping from the outside were I mean the whole the whole concept was based on an inversion of, of what was going on, of, of taking all the negative aspects of the Berlin Wall and turning them around into, into positive, uh, potentially positive attributes, which meant that people were escaping inwards instead of the other way around. And in this reception area, they were indoctrinated into the, into the merits of, the, uh, of planning the architecture of their new city, so that in here they were discussing and debating the future of the city. This was a model of that city and they were making changes in that model. And as soon as they were making changes in that model, they, the changes were implemented in the various parts of the, of the project. So it was in a sense an indoctrination center into a kind of new, new life. Then the baths that, uh, that, uh, that Rem uh, showed you earlier on, this was a kind of axonometric of that project. Uh, uh, the Institute of, uh, of uh, Biological Emergencies, which was uh, devoted to, uh, to the, to, in a sense, to uh, the uh, problems or questions of life and death, uh, up to, uh, and it was the, it was a kind of medical institute, which, uh, which was devoted to the de-escalation of the medical process. This was a, 
the, and it was divided into four parts. Uh, this part was uh, was a hospital, which was inspired from from a hospital that uh, we thought was um, uh, quite inspiring at the time in in in, uh, in Barcelona, which is uh, where where each uh, building is devoted to a particular disease, and uh, and the patients would enter uh, fr from one side and would, would travel along in conveyor a conveyor belt. Uh, then, uh, as they traveled along the conveyor belt, they would be picked up by doctors and uh, treated. And if they recovered, they would go out again. If they didn't, they would go to the next pavilion, and so on and so on. And if ultimately all the all the treatments failed, they went through the, to the to the uh, cemetery, which was uh, the other. Uh, <laughs> then there was, uh, uh, and then there were two uh, balancing uh, institutions. One, which was the what devoted to to uh, the kind of statistics of, of, uh, of, uh, of birth and death, uh, which uh, was a kind of institute where, where which could make, uh, uh, through the statistical uh, frenzy that went on in, in it, uh, one could make prognosis and, and, uh, about, uh, about the future and also uh, by looking deeply into the, pa into the <coughs> past. And this was a, a, a mental asylum where, um, where uh, mental patients were, were used because of their, of their increased ability uh, to, uh, of, of, of uh, fantasy and imagination to give history classes uh, to, to the rest of the, uh, in, in, performing, in performing the delusions to the rest of the, of the public. Um, uh, also, the other institution which we, had divided, which we had worked out at the time was the Park of the Four Elements. Uh, very brief, this was, was devoted to uh, air, fire, water, and earth. Uh, the, the, the fundamental idea behind it was, was the fact that the belief in, uh, in, in kind of a question of what is an urban park, uh, and, and it is nothing more than, uh, than um, uh, in fact, it, ideologically it aims at becoming a, a, a substitute of nature, and in fact, uh, in the center of every